wanted to go ahead and welcome you all to our first session for the CT Career Connections um, that we have going on over here with Caltrans. Okay, um, as everyone, as I stated earlier, my name is Russell Calvin. I am a recruiter here with Caltrans Department of Transportation, and I've been with Caltrans for about two years now. Um, I've graduated with my bachelor's degree from CSU Stanislaus, and I am working currently with uh, Department of Human Resources at the Talent Acquisition Department. So I am going to pass it over to a couple of my colleagues today that we do have on our panel. Um, one, his name is Jonathan Rivera. He works directly with me. Um, the other panelist was going to be Jessica Montoya. So, Jonathan, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Russell. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Jonathan Rivera. I'm also another recruiter here at Caltrans. Uh, been about, I've been here for about three months now, um, and I graduated from CSU Sacramento with my bachelor's degree in sociology. Perfect. And our uh, subject matter expert today, her name is Jessica Montoya. Jessica is a transportation engineer with the work zone operations branch uh, here at the department. So Jessica, go ahead and give yourself a nice little introduction. Hello everybody, I'm Jessica Montoya. Um, I have been working here with Caltrans about two years now, and I graduated from CSU Fresno with my bachelor's degree in um, civil engineering with my emphasis in transportation. Perfect. So a couple things that we're going to be going over on our agenda today. We'll talk a little bit about our department, who we are, what we do, and the opportunities we offer in transportation engineering. Jessica is going to give us a little bit of insight on her position, how she got started with Caltrans, and a couple of the cool projects that she's worked on as well. We will then get into some details regarding our benefits, the transportation engineering position, and how to apply, and then finally finish up with a round of Q&A. Just to go over a couple little housekeeping rules, please utilize the chat feature for all questions that you may have during the entire session. Members from our team are standing by to do their best to address those questions in the moment uh, or closer to the end during the Q&A sessions. Our team will be placing helpful links in there as well um, during the presentation. So, and this session is being recorded and live streamed on YouTube as well. So if you would like a copy of that, please go ahead and message us towards the end. And with that being said, we'll begin our session with a quick little video about our department, who we are, and um, kind of what we do. Let me go ahead and share that video. And here you go. Ready to embark on a career that combines technology, innovation, and a positive impact on the environment and community? Look no further than Caltrans, the California Department of Transportation. Join us as we explore some of the state-of-the-art technologies that we are incorporating into our projects to engineer the future of transportation. Safety is our top priority. We believe that using drones is a game changer in ensuring safer roads for everyone. Surveying hazardous areas, inspecting bridges and tunnels, and assessing road conditions without putting workers at unnecessary risk is a great advantage. Our acquisition of state-of-the-art UAS unmanned aircraft system technology allows us to be in multiple places at once, access high-risk areas safely, and fly instantly from anywhere. We are one of the first departments of transportation in the nation to utilize this equipment. With over 100 trained drone pilots statewide, we are revolutionizing the way we utilize technology, allowing us to make informed decisions that lead to improved safety measures and faster response times. Piloting the use of augmented reality helps us to visualize a new roadway, structure, utility, or feature in the actual dimensional space upon which it will be built. We're work zone ready with well-equipped lighting on hard hats, ensuring the visibility of our field workers is not compromised and giving us the ability to assess work sites at all hours of the day. We aim to provide a safe and reliable transportation network that serves all people and respects the environment while honoring our values of engagement, equity, innovation, integrity, and pride. 
At Caltrans, your career options are limitless. We provide comprehensive job rotation programs, mentorship opportunities, and a supportive work environment that encourages personal and professional growth. Whether you're an aspiring engineer, a tech enthusiast, or a community-driven individual, Caltrans has a perfect path to start your career. Do yourself a favor, come and join us. You would make us better. Perfect, so that is a quick little video, um, kind of giving a breakdown on who we are, um, the department and everything like that. So working with Caltrans allows a diver for a diversity of opportunities up and down the state of California, whether you prefer mountains such as like Tahoe, Yosemite, Redwood, the Redwood for Red for Rainforest, coastlines such as Big Sur, or in some instances, the comfort of your own home, we've got an opportunity for you. As you can see here on this map, uh, Caltrans is split up into 12 districts. Our departments start from the Oregon border, stretching all the way down to where Mexico begins. So fun fact is that Caltrans headquarters in Sacramento has the most employees, over 5,000 workers. This is followed by District 4, right over here, which is the Bay Area, and District 7, LA, with a bit of over 2,500 workers. Feel free to throw in the chat which district you guys would be interested in working in. Cool, I see a lot of seven, a lot of four also. Nice. So on this next slide, our department's mission is to provide a safe and a reliable transportation network that serves all people and respects the environment. Our vision is a brighter future for all through a world-class, through a world-class transportation network. Some of our goals include leading climate action, which we have been addressing by advancing complete streets and zero emission vehicles, piloting new materials and renewable fuels, and investigating nature-based solutions along with a myriad of other things. We also aim to advance equity and livability in all communities by adopting many new approaches focused on collaborative community and partner engagement, measuring impacts to public health and community vibrancy, and on prioritization of investments in historically harmed and segmented communities. Now, I would like to turn over to Jessica. Um, she's going to discuss her time here at Caltrans. I'll be asking her a few questions um, and we will turn over the floor to Jessica. So go ahead and reintroduce yourself, Jessica, and we'll kind of start rolling. Hello again, everybody. Um... For those who came in late, I'm Jessica Montoya. I graduated from CSU Fresno and with my bachelor's degree in civil engineering. I have been with Caltrans for a little bit over two years now. And um, I actually started my Caltrans career in District 5 in Santa Barbara Construction. And I have now, earlier this year, moved uh, to, back to District 6, which is Fresno. Hello, Jessica. Hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. No, you're good. Let me just answer um, two of these questions real quick or, or one of them really quickly. Um, I'm, okay. I'm seeing in there before we jump right back in. I am seeing in there that um, Nikolai is asking about uh, resume submitted by freshmen for potential internship positions. So we do have internship positions, but we call them student assistant positions. All of those positions are advertised on calinterns.org. Um, I will have my colleague go ahead and drop a link to that in the um, chat box for you. So go ahead. We will continue. Jessica, give us a little more about yourself. Yeah. Anna. So, um, sorry. So earlier this year, I moved back to Fresno, which is District 6, and I am now in the Work Zone Operations branch. Um, and that's kind of how my career with Caltrans started. Um, cool. So I will go ahead and ask you a couple questions just to kind of give everyone some insight. Um, so why, why Caltrans? Why did you, while going to school and everything like that, what led you to being intrigued or interested in working for Caltrans? 
So I always had a very big interest in transportation, um, which is why I chose to emphasize in transportation engineering and Caltrans, that's um, the biggest thing that they uh, advertise. But I think what got me the most interested was during my last year of college, I attended a career fair and um, I went with Caltrans just to kind of hear about what they stood for. And um, I just really enjoyed how they advertise a work life balance and um, as well as just like the great benefits that Caltrans offers when which comes to health benefits, um, retirement benefits. Uh, but most importantly, the work life balance is was my priority for when I would get into my career, um, which is what drew me to Caltrans. OK, so. We're going to be talking about it later on um, about the rotation program. Well, I'm kind of going to go a little bit into depth about it and how a lot of our civil engineers and transportation engineers can make use of it. Um, but in the meantime, can you give us a little bit of insight on the ro rotation program and like what aspects you've kind of used about it or like what aspects you've kind of liked about um, the rotation program? Yeah. So um, I haven't started my rotation program. However, I did start out in construction and construction is one of the requirements for when you go into your rotation program. And um, I think, especially for construction, that's really what I can speak on is construction is such an amazing division to go into and you truly do not learn as much as you do than when you're in construction. None of the books that you learn in re in school or um, even, you know, Caltrans has amazing designers, but even while the designers try their best, you don't know what's going to be going on out in the field. And I think construction, apart from teaching you different aspects of engineering itself, it also teaches you different types of personalities that you can have in your workplace. Um, it just gets you out of your comfort zone and it truly just teaches you so many different aspects. And I think that's great that Caltrans requires transportation, uh, civil engineers to go into this rotation program because it teaches you different aspects. And, you know, if you just go into one, you can spend your whole life in one certain place, but this kind of branches you out. And sometimes you discover that turns out maybe you love construction or you love design or you love a different elective and you wouldn't have known that if you know you weren't put in that position to work there. Now you said you were you were in construction where you're at Santa Barbara, right? Yes. Um, now you're in District Six in Fresno, and you're with the Work Zone Operations Branch. Yes. Is there? What's the difference? Like for for example, myself, I'm not I'm not a civil engineer. So what's the difference between what you were doing in the construction versus Work Zone Operations now? So. Um, one thing that I found out is that there's not too much of a difference or more. I learned that they all work together. That's one thing that, you know, that's another great reason with Caltrans because we have so many different divisions. Everything works together all in one. Um, I will say in construction, the biggest thing is um, how unpredictable it is. And um, so being in construction, it's, um, Again, like when you're out in the field, you just don't know what's out there <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, you do just kind of have to be on your feet, think on your feet, um, make educated guesses right away. Um, as an inspector, you're out in the field all day and um, yeah, you just learn about that aspect from actually building the project that everybody has worked so hard for and in works on operations, um, the part that ties into construction is I actually make the work windows for construction. So when there's a certain lane closure, ramp closure, um, based on volumes for you know the traffic in that area, then we will give them a certain amount of time that they can work. And um, that's what I do in work zone operations. Okay. Um, so was there a certain project that you're kind of proud of, like working in Santa Barbara and working in Fresno, two different, areas, two different geographical challenges um, within the state of California with that diversity. Is there a, a project that kind of stands out a little bit to you? So in 
when I was in Santa Barbara, um, everything's a lot more hands-on. I feel that's one way to put it when you're in construction. Um, the project that I was on for the longest out there was the Gaviota rest area. Uh, I'm not sure if it's open yet because the storms from earlier this year kind of um, backtrack some progress on that rest area, but that rest area taught me so much as well because I did focus on transportation when I was in school. But that project had a wide variety of different engineering practices in it. It had structural aspects, it had wastewater aspects, and um, you know, even landscape and environmental. And I think that truly just like brought me out and it exposed me to so many different things. Um, but I think probably the one that I'd be the proudest of while I was out in construction was it wasn't a set project, it was actually an emergency project which the word emergency kind of gives it away. It's it's even more unpredictable and there's no plans to go off of. You kind of just have to see what's happening and make um, decisions out in the field. And um, for those who live in California, um, we had unprecedented amount of rainfall earlier this year. And you know, up in Santa Barbara, there's the mountains and a lot of houses out on the mountains. And um, that water just did a lot of damage a lot there was a lot of flooding and um you know roads had to be closed some people were completely locked in into their homes and caltrans along with you know caltrans maintenance and um, other consultants contractors we all went out there and we tried to clean it up and i think that was that gave kind of a bigger sense of accomplishment because it was an immediate type of help that we were helping with the community out there yeah, that storm was a, a little intense. Um, yeah, I know my I myself, I didn't have electricity. the 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 amount of rain that we got knocked out my electricity for three days. So I had no electricity for three days. Um, I was actually being shuttled into my house because my road was blocked off. Um, there was like mudslides all over the freeway and everything like that. So I'm sure you guys definitely had. Uh, your hands full. Yeah. Um, so last question I have for you, if there's anything that you want to share for new graduates applying to Caltrans um, or wanting a career in Caltrans, what advice would you give them? So um, as a student, you know, you kind of have such a big and long career in front of you future. And there is a different, I would say there is a difference between working in the public sector and the private sector. And that you know, it's not for everybody. The public sector is not for everybody and the private sector is not for everybody. So I think being a student is such an advantage to begin getting into Caltrans. Um, you kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we have the student assistant positions. And when I was in school, I didn't really know the entire, like the gravity of that, how much students actually did at Caltrans. And in works on operations, we have a lot of students and they're great. I think they're learning a lot already if not learning just about engineering, they're also just learning about the workplace and the type of place that they wanna work. And I think um, starting off as a student, that would be a great time for you to see what you would actually like to do eventually in your career. And um, so yeah, get out there and try to attend as many career fairs as you can. Talk to a lot of people who have a lot of experience um, I know I've only been working for two years, but I feel like I learned a lot and um, it's because of mentors as well. LinkedIn is a great place to find, um, you know, people who already work in Caltrans. You can reach out to them, um, ask them for help or, um, yeah, I think that's what I would say to students. <laughs> Cool. Well, I just wanted to kind of thank you so much for all the valuable information that you gave us during this little session that we had with you. Um, and with that being said, thank you so much once again. Thank you. So now that Jessica's kind of given us a little bit of insight on um, what the day in the life is of uh, an, a civil engineer, I'm going to go into a couple of things and like the benefits that we offer as a team. So in addition to usual things like medical, dental, vision, and retirement, we've got an amazing work-life balance like Jessica was talking about. 
um, for our employees, along with a multitude of career de uh, development opportunities, such as mentorship, leadership training, and the rotation program, similar to what Jessica was talking about, and we'll go into a little more depth about it um, shortly. But we aim to create leaders and provide employees with the necessary knowledge to carry out their work confidently. As I said, with that rotation program, it's one of the things that makes uh, our engineering division highly unique. Um, so all new engineers are rotated through project delivery, working in our construction and design units, similar to Jessica, with the option of one of the elective units listed um, on this slide right here. So please note though, that availability for some of these are dependent on the district that you would hire into. Um, quick question using the chat, which of, which of our divisions do you think has the most employees? Maintenance, engineering, or administration? So go ahead and type your answer. Which of our divisions do you think has the most employees? Maintenance, engineering, or administration? So I'm seeing a lot of maintenance, a couple engineering. Maintenance and engineering. Oh, I see a design. All right. So those of you that guessed engineering are actually correct. Of, of our almost 21,000 employees department wide, around 8,000 of those are engineering, followed by maintenance as the next highest staff division. So here we have the different steps with our transportation engineering classification. Range A right here down at the bottom is considered entry level, with minimal qualifications being a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from an ABED accredited college, or for those whose degree is not in civil engineering, an EIT will be accepted as well. Alternatively, we have an in-house written hurdle examination and more information on that can be found on our website, which Jonathan will be uh, dropping right down in the chat. This also shows that in order to get to range D right here at the top, a professional engineer's license is required or a PE. If you are a current transportation engineer with our department, one of the good things is that we'll assist with and cover the cost of the licensing. So if you come in as a range A and are looking to progress your career and looking to get into a range D, we are able to help assist with those costs. Now let's say you've hit range D and you've been there for a little bit of time, but you kind of want to keep going further your career a little bit more. We do have senior and supervising engineering positions available as well for you to continue to advance your career in. Um, as previously mentioned, we aim to create leaders and encourage all our employees to progress and promote. Now, the big question that everybody has after that is, how do I apply? I saw a couple of you guys asking that in the chat as well. So the only way to apply to our positions is through the Cal Careers website. So that's listed right over here, calcareers.ca.gov. You're going to want to create an account take the transportation engineer civil online examination if you meet the minimum qualifications as i stated earlier and start applying for jobs for current transportation engineering positions listed on our website that jonathan has included in the chat um, there may be relocation assistance for those of you out of state so there is a specific uh, list that jonathan is including in the chat box as well and then one last question that I have for all before we start answering some of your questions is uh, Caltrans bridge inspectors are responsible for maintaining the safety and integrity of bridges owned by the state of California and local government agencies. How many bridges do you think this encompasses? Hint, it's more than 10,000, but less than 50,000. So how many bridges do you think this encompasses? More than 10, less than 50. A lot of 35 and 40K. Some 25, 42. The answer is 
26,000. So the um, answer for that is 26,000 bridges. So with that, we're gonna get ready to begin our Q&A session. But before we start the Q&A, everyone who's registered today can join us for interview tip session that will be held in the next few weeks. You'll receive an email once the date is finalized. So we are getting ready to um, finalize that date because we do have a couple more sessions. So we will hold the second session, but you will be registered for that session. If you have questions, but to ha have to leave at this point, you can also email us at ask recruitment uh, email, which is going to be shown right down at the bottom of this ask recruitment at dot.ca.gov. And with that, I'll go ahead and start asking questions that you guys might have for us or Jessica. Um, Jonathan will be uh, asking Jessica and myself those questions. And we also do have a surprise for those of you who have joined us today and made it to the end. Um, you'll all be entered in to win a $25 Starbucks gift card and a chance to have a coffee with one of our engineers. Um, there will be a winner from this session. And the winning attendee will be selected at random and contacted via the email that you registered with. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and swap it back over to Jonathan. And Jonathan, go ahead and start firing a couple of those questions that you saw in the chat away. Appreciate it, Russell. Uh, I think I want to start off with uh, this question we had. So it says, I'm a recent grad. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from international um, okay. in electrical engineering. Uh, what would be your top two advices? So a couple of the things that I have for uh, international is what one I do encourage you to apply. Um, apply as soon as you can. The email for being international with your your diploma. I'm sending you correct. The diploma is international, correct? Jonathan, sorry, Russell. One more time. They, re they received their diploma for international. I'm seeing yes, right? Yes. Okay. So I would reach out to ask exams at dot.ca.gov so that way you can try to get a hurdle examination um, scheduled. That way we can start the process of getting um, you into the system and at the same time, ask exams will also advise you on getting your um, credentials verified since it is from international as well. But there definitely is a way Oh, you meant to say F1. So for all um, visa questions, please go ahead and contact luisa.lozano at dot.ca.gov. That information is in the chat box. What else do you have, Jonathan? Thanks, Russell. Um, let's see. We have a few good ones. Let's see. Um, can you tell us about the approaches that Caltrans is taking in regards to electric vehicles and integrating roadways? So one of the things that we've kind of done is um, almost like a lead by example approach. So recently, one of the initiatives for, I know we have a department, um, zero emissions vehicles and certain things like that, but we actually staff our division of equipment, I believe, with quite a few um, electric vehicles, all elect full electric vehicles. So that way, um, certain certain divisions, when they are going around doing any type of state business, they are using electric vehicles. I was out in, um, I was on my way to a event in District 10, which is um, the San Joaquin County area. And they were driving electric vehicles out to the event, and I was actually following them the whole way up to the event. So for an hour, I was behind them, not knowing. And then when the car turned, I noticed the Caltrans logo. Um, I know that when I went to District 4, the team, um, the building's parking lot, one whole floor is dedicated just towards their electrical vehicles with charging stations and everything like that. So you can't even park there because we're using a fleet of electric vehicles to help cut back on the waste. So it is one of those things that I'm kind of proud of because it, it's like leading by example. We're not just kind of talking about it, but we're actually doing certain things to help with the whole entire process. And Jessica, if you have any insight um, 
regarding that question, feel free to chime in as well. Yeah, I will say I know in the design process of a lot of projects, that's where a lot of different type of. Um, oh, my God, I'm sorry, I'm losing my words. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do to help the environment, basically, um, especially I know in landscape jobs, um, we do have those certain, um, you know, like more trees, more planting, um, trying to keep it. A lot more clean. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I've we had this question from a couple of people. Um, it reads, "What work opportunities do we offer for first time freshmen, like like myself, like themselves? Um, they are a civil engineering major at Cal Poly. Okay, so they're in their uh the freshman year, freshman first semester." Or I, I, I'm not sure what Cal Poly get to go, but their first um, year first of college. Year. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest, and similar to what Jessica had suggested earlier in her tip, is um, trying to get on with Caltrans via being a volunteer. And we do have volunteer forms. Or if you can sign up for the student assistant program, which is student, uh, calinterns.org, and seeing where you might be able to get in um, with Caltrans, because that does bring a lot of really, really valuable uh, work experience and knowledge and a lot more insight, kind of getting your um, feet dirty and your hands wet on what is actually happening in in the field. Um, Jessica, anything on, on that that you might want to uh, also suggest for a freshman? Yeah, I'll just add, um, sorry, I think I saw in, in another question in there about asking when to when you can start applying, and I think freshman year, that is also a great opportunity. Um, you don't have to know everything to be a student, okay? Um, I know it can kind of be scary, but the sooner you get in, you know, in Caltrans, they're not gonna expect you to know everything as a freshman. Um, so even if it's maybe for a position that, you know, you're not sure you wanna go your career towards, um, if it's kind of similar, I think it's great. Um, also just to get an opportunity just to get into Caltrans. Yeah, and those internships, when you go on calinterns.org, those internships are running year round. So don't necessarily think in your head like it's a fall internship or it's, a, or it's like a summer, a certain semester. So those internships will be year round. Um, when you see it open, go ahead and apply. There will be a final filing date down at the bottom, but those internships do run you year round. The only thing that we ask is that you're enrolled in school for at least six semester units and that you have a 2.0 GPA. Um, we do treat it like a job. And I mean, any other questions on it, you guys can feel free to, to reach out to us at that ask recruitment at dot.ca.gov inbox. And we, we have a team that would also be able to assist you guys as well if we don't answer the question that you guys might have. Um, here today. Next question, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you. Let's see. Sorry, we have so many questions going <laughs> on. Uh, to, okay, this is a good one. Uh, this one's from Nestor. Uh, Nestor writes, uh, I'm new to Caltrans. I have a business BA degree. How can I pursue a career in engineering? Would you recommend re-enrolling in a college to work on my engineering degree or perhaps a master's in transportation? You definitely can. There, there's a couple of different outlets, right? Um, we have other programs, junior engineer, like there's a, a, a jet classification, junior engineering technician, um, a tech classification, tech uh, technical engineering, uh, right, Jessica? So there's a couple of different ways where we have the positions within Caltrans to be able to go that route besides getting your, your degree. But then, Jessica, do you know of any yeah. other ways? Yeah. Yeah. So um, actually, I saw this happen a lot in construction where they would start as technical uh, junior engineering technicians. But as long as you take your EIT, 
your FE exam, uh, for which is a fundamentals of engineering, and then you get um, certification for to be an engineer in training. You don't have to have an engineering degree to take that exam. Um, however, I mean, it does make it a little bit harder. You're going to have to study a lot, but it is a possibility. And I've seen it happen. It happens in, in construction a lot. And um, that is also another option that you can without having to go back to school to get an actual engineering degree. You can just take that fundamentals of engineering exam to become an EIT. Thank you both. Uh, next question. This one's coming from Kenneth. Um, and this might this might be specific to you, Jessica. Uh, what project are you currently working on and what has been the biggest challenge with that project? So in works and operations, we actually work on so many projects at once. Um, and it's it's a quicker turnaround for our unit. However, sometimes we do get these really big projects. Um, for example, I actually had a meeting on this right before this. Um, it's going to be this really big project out on the 99 um, on Olive and Clinton. And it's when it gets to huge projects like that on such a big route that is used statewide. Everybody knows the 99. Um, you know, it's it involves a lot of meetings, a lot of different units, a lot of different people that you have to communicate with. And um, I think that's can't speak too much on it because it is still in the works. But um, yeah, I think when it comes to those projects, it's really important to be organized and communication. And um, yeah, I think that's one of the projects that kind of pops out to me right now. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. Another question, um, something I feel like it's important to touch on. Uh, what has work life balance look like for you um, with Caltrans? You want to go first, yes, or you want me to go? I'll, I'll just say something really quick. Okay, um, go ahead. So work life balance for me, um, I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people in the private sector talk about how and actually one of my first internships um, when I was still in school was at a private structural engineering firm. And I know it, that's not the case with everybody, but the the owner of the firm, you know, and the other workers, sometimes they'd be working for hours, like 10 hour days, you know, it's, it's a lot more difficult. And, um, you know, I think that was made me realize that I didn't want that. And I think here at Caltrans, as much as I love my job and I enjoy what I do, you know, once that clock hits 3.30, I want to be done with the day and not have to think about work, you know, for the rest of the night. And I think Caltrans is just that works with Caltrans, you know, it's it doesn't, you know, bleed into your personal life. Yeah. As much. Mm -hmm. So for me, I came from private sector um nothing to do with the state at all um i actually came from sales prior to this um and i, I thought i had my life like a work, good solid work-life balance um, but moving over to the state and knowing that i'm off when i'm off they're very uh respectful of me being off as well and not you know contacting me um i have the weekends off and certain things like that so i like i'm no longer working these 10 to 12 hour days i'm no longer working six days a week i don't work on the weekends um and it's really helped my mental health for the balancing um and like my emotional health too because i discovered how much i wasn't present for um, how many big moments in my family's life, my goddaughter's lives, um, and things like that, that I was missing. And now being able to be present for those things um, was huge. And it even took my closest friends and family some adjustment to be like, wait, Russell's going to be here on time. He's not going to be late 
where you don't have to wait until a certain time or try to reach out to him to see if he's going to make it um, because he he is off. He does have that free time and it kind of really, really helped me. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll openly say it that the work-life balance was probably besides the benefits that we receive work-life balance is, is like right there one in one or two um, for benefits of working with the company. Uh, Jonathan, we'll go ahead and ask uh, two more questions and then we'll let everybody go. Got it. Thanks for your answers, everybody. Um, this next question comes from Kevin. He's asking, what can we expect when working as a student assistant? What is expected from us when considering this position? So student assistants kind of vary. Uh, it, I hate answering it like that, but it does kind of vary. Um, it just really, really depends on what department you get hired in with. So when you do look at those student assistant programs or applications and advertisements, it's going to list a couple of things on there. It may be, I know I, I posted up a couple of them, like civil engineering student assistant program. So they're going to be working in the civil engineering department with some of the transportation engineers, certain things like that. I posted up some things for the admin department as well. So the things that one would be doing really, really does vary depending on which department you end up landing with. Um, and that's just kind of it, it. Unfortunately, it is weird to say it, but because there are some times where um, they might not necessarily have that exact degree, but they're in a department with the stu uh, student assistant. You look like you have something to say, Jessica. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I'll try and speak for the students in my unit. Um, I also work closely with a lot of electrical students who work with traffic electrical. And it even I was kind of surprised seeing how much they actually do. Um, for the most part, they're actually uh, almost doing exactly what I'm doing just at, at, you know, at a lower, like, you know, with Sorry. our help, with the engineers help. Yeah. Um, but they are getting exposed to a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, you're not just fetching coffee, you know, how mm -hmm. you would probably expect an intern. Um, you're actually, they're giving you work to do and they're making sure as long as you have a great, you know, personality and you want to learn. They're going to give you work to do um, and like, I, I know, even some of our, um, like, electrical um, students, they, they made our website. They, yeah, you're not, um, you're not just like, mm -hmm. you're not. Making 100 copies of something yeah. or getting caught, like you're gaining some valuable um, work experience. Mm -hmm. Like we work with a lot of traffic volumes and um, so we, it's a lot of data that we work with and. That's what our student assistants are doing. They're going through that data. They're putting it into, you know, concise forms. And um, so it it is really great exposure. Perfect. Jonathan, one last question and then we'll get ready to let everybody go. Awesome. Um, this last question, Jessica, you, you touched on it a little bit um, when you mentioned the electrical engineers, but would you be able to expand on what a typical role is for the electrical engineers? Yeah, so um, there are a lot of opportunities for electrical um, in construction, even there are electrical inspectors. So basically what I was doing um, out in construction sites, but they focus on electrical systems. So whenever there's any type of electrical system that's going on in a job, they'll be the ones out there inspecting and making sure that, you know, it's being installed properly, it's working properly. Um, and then more on my side, it, they're not in my unit directly, but we're under the same um, branch and they are called traffic electrical and um, they work on traffic signaling, um, you know, like ramp metering, all of that kind of, the camera CC, cause we have CCTVs everywhere. And um, that's also what they work on um, there. So that's really all I can speak on because that's all I've seen for electrical. But um, there's also electrical, I know electrical design, they do a lot. Um, so there are many different types 
of electrical opportunities. Perfect. And with that being said, I just kind of wanted to go ahead and thank everybody for attending today's session. Um, I just did also want to remind you guys that for those of you who uh, your, you feel like your question was not addressed, your questions were captured and we will be emailing you later on today. Uh, or not later on today, but we will be emailing you later on with some of the answers as close as we can to go ahead and address your questions. Uh, we don't want you to feel like you're left out. Uh, also, for any of you who do, do have any extra questions that potentially aren't being addressed, you guys can go ahead and reach out to us at the ask recruitment at dot.ca.gov email inbox, and we will go ahead and respond back to you guys um, as soon as we possibly can. But other than that, you guys have a great day. Thank you for joining us on this first session of the CT Career Connections. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Have a good one, everyone.